You're listening to the Intrepid Radio Program with Scotty Roberts. Intelligent Talk. Wednesday evening, folks. It's the middle of the week. If you didn't know it, if you're sequestered at home and you don't know what day it is or what time it is, and everything's blending together, listen to this show. At least at the beginning of every show, I tell you what day it is. It's Wednesday. So happy Wednesday. I hope your sequestration is going well. If you're considered an essential employee, hopefully uh, your being out to work with minimal contact is going well for you as well. Welcome to my show. This is this this is Scotty Roberts, and this is the Intrepid Radio Program, right here on the Odyssey Radio Network. That's O D Y S Y One dot com. You can go on over and see all the goodness that is Odyssey Radio. Check out the schedule. Check out all the different outlets where this show plays in audio form. Also, you can check out my YouTube channel, where we show the simulcast of this show in video. And I was going to just see there how many times I could use the word show in one sentence. So uh, check out the uh, video broadcast, and that's over on my YouTube channel, Mr. Scotty Roberts. And uh, join the live chat room there. It's exciting, it's fun, full of good people, the intrep heads as we like to call them. And uh, so go over and join the talk as this show is playing. Now, um, I want to uh, talk about a couple of things. Sequestration. During the winter was even rougher, as the up here in the great white north, Minnesota, Wisconsin, it's been cold, even though spring is coming, but now it's starting to get nice out, so we can get outside a little more. Maybe not outside with groups of people or things like that, but we get outside. We play outside with the kids. We do stuff like that. But there are things that you can do. Did you know that there are 10 things that mentally strong people do during a pandemic and uh, research really reveals how you can reduce your anxiety and stress during what we're going through right now now hopefully this is not a long-lived thing will it change us forever people asks ask I think it's gonna change us the way 9-11 changed us we do things differently but our way of life continues to grow and thrive even though there are certain things I can't be dropped off at the airport five minutes before my flight leaves and run to the the gate anymore. Uh, of course, that's a long time ago now. It's over 20 years ago I used to do that. Uh, but So there are things that have changed. Our security has changed. Uh, the way we view other people in the world has changed. We're becoming closer, closer. The world's becoming smaller as a result of 9-11, as a result of the Internet. And some of those things. And we've been talking about the Internet, some of the damaging things about it, about conspiracy theories, about the delusions that we can all suffer as a result of the Internet. But let me uh, break away from that for at least this first half of the show, and we'll jump back into that stuff in the second half. But I want to talk to you about the 10 things that mentally strong people do during a pandemic. And so you really you got to ask yourself, are you a strong person? mentally how are you let me ask you my listeners on the radio and those of you who are over in the chat room how are you dealing with self-sequestration self-isolation the changing economy right now which i think is a blip on the radar and it's all going to recover itself in the near future Uh, so i'm not too worried about that but it's not helping those who are out of work right now and it's a struggle So how are you coping with that? How are you coping with having the kids home? How are you coping? And, you know, I'm a parent. My wife and I are parents of three uh, amazing, vivacious kids, all under the age of 10 and under, 10, 8, and 5. And uh, they could destroy this house in a heartbeat. And so it's a challenge keeping on top of them, getting their schoolwork done. Then we find out school's canceled for the rest of the year. So it's going to be... August, September, before they even get back to school. So we got kids home all day. 
and not being able to take them in their normal activities, scouting and the different things that they're engaged in. We're all at home. And so, uh, and schooling at home and trying to get them motivated and keep them motivated at home. So all of us are in that boat. How are you coping with this? How are you handling it? And I'm asking that question, not just rhetorically. Let me ask you, how are you doing? What's going on in your life? How are things evening out for you during this time? How are you coping with possible loss of work, uh, a diminishment in income, uh, having kids around all the time, or just being by yourself all the time? Now, this is what I want to talk about in this first half, is how we cope with this stuff from a, a, a standpoint of strength as opposed to a standpoint of, I've been done in. Uh, oh, woe is me, I, I'm undone. I, I have no income. I have nothing going on that used to. I can't party the way I used to. I can't see friends and family, etc. We know all know the stories that are out there. So <clears throat> this current global pandemic and the systemic ramifications are not only unprecedented in our personal histories, but it's harrowing. We're all adjusting to these new realities and this grieving the loss of the old realities. And all of us are simply trying to manage our daily lives, taking care of our children as parents, taking care of our parents if we're a little older, dealing with financial stresses, adjusting to this new way of life that was thrust upon us almost out of nowhere. And so it's not like we had a time to build up to this. It just happened. And there it is. Boom, it's on you. And within a couple of weeks, we're in the position we're in now. And now we've been here for the better part of two months. So all the stressors related to this pandemic may likely result in a myriad of negative feelings, depression, discouragement, anxiety, even post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Uh, some people are experiencing. We've heard of suicides during this time. And so the collective trauma that we're experiencing might feel really bleak. But this isn't the first crisis in our history. Uh, Research investigations and crises such as the 9-11 terrorist attacks, Ebola, SARS, this all reveal how individuals respond to pandemic or crises uh, in both adaptive and and maladaptive ways. And so I'm, I'm going to go through 10 things and see, well, let's, let's get into this. Researchers have studied how the mentally strong may behave through these adverse experiences. And by mentally strong, I'm not trying to draw a line of division. Over here we have the strong people, and over here we have the weak losers. That's not what I'm saying. There are things we can do to be mentally strong. So what are those things that the mentally strong are doing to survive? How do you keep happy? Do you, do you, do you know what comes to mind? It just popped into my mind when I, when I said happy. Um, if you ever watched the Lord of the Rings movies, uh, because I think they captured this very well, at the end of the third movie in the trilogy, you've got uh, uh, Bilbo, not Bilbo, um, um, Frodo Baggins, who is back home and he's wandering quietly through his his house. There's no lights on. There's light outside, but you know, one of those days where you got no lights on and there's dark shadows in your house and you're just wandering through. It's the peace and calm. And he's and he's got a voiceover narrative of him, and uh, you just see him walking and his voice says, "How can things go back to the way they were?" How do you put together the pieces of a broken life and a life that has been snapped in two? He's not necessarily talking about his own life as life in general has been broken. How do you put these things back together? And so this is what comes to mind. How can we be happy again? How can we find those things again? And uh, uh, even though I have read this before, um, I want to read this to you. I got to call it up, and it was from the second movie in the Lord of the Rings uh, trilogy. And uh, um, to me, this is very profound. And those of you who know me well and have listened to this show, 
Uh, you've heard this before. You've heard me talk about this before. And it's... Uh, I'm, I'm looking for the exact line of the quote. I've got a picture hanging on my wall that you can't see from here. And it's, it's a nightmare to take it down and show it to you. But this is how this speech goes. If I can find the right link that gives me the, the scripted text from this. And it goes like this. Now, think of yourself. This is a fantasy story, of course. Lord of the Rings. And it's a fantasy story that Tolkien wrote in very human characteristics. Things that we all experience. And uh, Frodo and Sam, they're, uh, Frodo's got to carry this ring to Mount Doom and he's got to throw it in the lava of Mount Doom to destroy it. And it's getting heavier and heavier, the mystical magic that's behind it. And Frodo, and, and they're exhausted physically, motion, emotionally, mentally. And Frodo says to Sam, he says, I can't do this, Sam. And Sam responds, and this is the lines, and it's, it's emotional. It, it taps my emotions. It's, he says, I know, Sam says, it's all wrong. By rights, we shouldn't even be here. But we are. It's like in the great stories, Mr. Frodo. The ones that really mattered, full of darkness and danger they were. And sometimes you didn't want to know the end. Because how could the end be happy? How could the world go back to the way it was when so much bad had happened? But in the end, it's only a passing thing, this shadow. Even darkness must pass. A new day will come. And when the sun shines, it will shine out the clearer. Those were the stories that stayed with you, that meant something, even if you were too small to understand why. But I think, Mr. Frodo, I do understand. I know now. Folk in those stories had lots of chances of turning back, only they didn't. They kept going because they were holding on to something. And Frodo responds, what are we holding on to, Sam? And Sam responds that there's some good in this world, Mr. Frodo, and it's worth fighting for. This, to me, is the quintessence of what we're in right now. What makes you a strong person in dire times versus, I hate to say it this way because it sounds so demeaning, but a weak person, somebody who has less strength than you. How do you put that up? How do you survive it? What do you do? You know, it's because, number one, you know that this is a passing thing. And the world will go back. There will be happiness and there will be things. And it seems dark, but this is a great time also as well, this self-sequestration to get to know your family better. If you're alone and you're, self, you're self-isolated, that's tougher. That's a little... Sometimes... I kind of wish I could be a little self-isolated for a few weeks. Uh, it'd be nice. I would, I would like that. But I'm surrounded by children and my wife, everybody all day long. So sometimes there's that need for that. But overall, what I'm referring to is what is the thing that gets you through those times? What do you see ahead? How do you cope internally? And researchers have studied how the mentally strong might behave through adverse experiences. And hopefully this information I'm going to give to you here over the next, what do we got? We got about uh, 10 minutes in this first segment left, and that's all. But what's going to, what inf- I, I hope that this information is going to help you reduce the likelihood of the mental stress, the emotional stress that results from having this pandemic and being in the condition we're in now. Uh, The mentally strong and the resilient may eventually display post-traumatic growth versus post-traumatic stress symptoms. The strong come out of with uh, PTG, post-traumatic growth. 
Uh, Post-traumatic growth is understood as a positive psychological change that results from traumatic and highly stressful experiences. And although we're in the middle of the crisis, individuals can can rise to a higher level of functioning when the pandemic ends and things go back to quote-unquote normal, the new normal that will come from this. Now, most of, most of us know the basics, and it's vital to create daily habits, to exercise, to connect with our social supports using vir- virtual meetings and social media. I have a very dear friend of mine. I've known him for 20 years, he and his wife, and he started a what they call the uh, this uh, cocktail hour uh, and we do it on Zoom, and we all have all our cameras up. We have anywhere from five to ten people that join every night of the week. And I don't make it every night, but this is an outlet. This is one of the things we do. And this is there. there's some suggestions based on evidence how mentally strong people respond to the kind of crisis we're in. And this might help you not only manage the, the pandemic, but decrease the likelihood of any kind of long-term mental health issues, PTSD, that kind of thing, stress as a result of the of the pandemic. Let's start with number one. Number one, they limit news and media exposure. Now, it's tough to not follow the news right now. There's daily briefings. There's politics that are still going on. If you've noticed, politicking is still out there but it's playing less importance to understanding. Research suggests that there are two main predictors to how well a person is going to respond in a crisis like a pandemic. The first is how vulnerable they were in their own lives prior to the crisis beginning. And the second is how much news they consumed during the crisis. Chronic news exposure may create vicarious drama. And PTSD, vicarious drama. You know what it means to be vi- live vicariously through someone else. And it's those other things we see, and they're the things that can drag us down. Uh, my wife is very vulnerable to anxiety, and she is daily would watch this stuff. I said, Rainy, turn the stuff off. Let's focus on our family, focus on where we are. We can get the tidbits we need. Let's diminish that. And so media exposure and the 24-7 news cycle can activate this fight-or-flight response that's in all of us, which can lead to traumatic stress. For example, in a study conducted after the 9-11 terrorist attacks, several hours of media exposure after 9-11 were associated with PTSD and new physical health issues. Two to three years later in participants... In another study conducted along the Ebola outbreak in 2014, daily media exposure was associated with an increased distress and poorer functioning over a long term compared to those who limited their news and media intake. Mentally strong people limit their news exposure. They choose reliable and responsible Media, they limit exposure to distressful images that are shown on the news. Cut it out, folks, of your existence for now. Get what you need to get, but don't thrive on it. Don't go every day, what's going on today? Where are we going to be? Just go with it. You can get your information from many different kinds of sources. So number two, strong people. They accept their feelings as normal. Mentally strong individuals accept their feelings as normal because this is a time for both personal trauma and collective trauma. A resilient individual understands that feelings such as fear, anxiety, hopelessness, anger, and sadness are normal because the information is too overwhelming to process all at one time. The American Psychological Association also accepts this from a diagnostic perspective. Based on the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Health Disorders, which came out in 2013, the diagnosis of adjustment disorder with anxious or depressed mood is applied to any person who's experiencing symptoms and has had a major life event occur in the last 90 days. Naturally, This applies to all of us, because we're all amid a pandemic right now. 
that's changed our lives. It's changed the way we do things. Whether the loss of a job, homeschooling kids, tearing your hair out over kids being home all day, the inability to attend a funeral of somebody you love who's died, or to see a loved one in a nursing home or otherwise, these reactions are all well within those normal limits. But the str strong people accept these as feelings as normal. We all, there's a normalization of all of this. We understand this. This is the stuff, this is the shit that happens. And we roll with it. We accept it. We move on with it. Number three, uh, strong, this mentally strong, carefully choose the leaders they follow. Mentally strong people follow those who display healthy leadership skills and mental health. Uh, um, there was a suggestion in a 2020 uh, uh, study, it's too long to get into it, uh, that suggested that providers promote calm and rational action, these leadership providers, and they limit watching media and individuals who undermine public health efforts to combat things. It's both confusing and psychologically harmful to watch leaders who publicly argue and misstate the facts and the research. And uh, Governor, look at look at Governor Cuomo and President Trump. There's cogent evidence, uh, evidence-based calm, and thorough mannerisms. You get the same from the president. You might not like his style, but we have leaders who are doing things to try to keep us calm. Uh, there was a suggestion that choosing one or two trusted sources, uh, the CDC, the World Health Organization, I've got problems with them, but uh, uh, you can accept some of what's coming out of there. You can accept the president's task force. You can accept what's going on, the research that's being done. You can use all of this to stay informed of critical updates. Researchers who, ass who, who assert that since there are no drastic changes from hour to hour during a pandemic, choosing a reliable print media source one time per day is suggested. Of course, in the pandemic, who knows if you're getting in the newspaper. So you got to choose your sources wisely. And at the same time, choose the leaders you're going to follow and listen to them. They don't all have to be on the same political page, but choose the leaders that help you understand what's going on um, also number four very strong mentally people mental people mentally strong people there you go not strong mental people uh, they limit their social media and exposure uh, mentally strong people people understand how social media operates they limit their exposure they put more constraints on it than they had before like Myself Now, I consider myself obviously mentally strong. I don't get on and talk politics the way I used to. It still happens. But I've stopped really over-posting anything political because I don't need that. I don't need the stress of that. And stress only in working yourself up into an argument. So I've limited that exposure. So you know that social media platforms like Facebook are unofficial news channels. You're going to hear everything that's a different color under the sun on Facebook. Everybody's an expert. They deliver news that's tailored for you. Some of it's even fake news. Based on your behaviors and your preferences gleaned over the last decade. If you've been on Facebook for a while, the algorithms shoot you the news you want to see. Algorithms are used to give you the news that you'll most likely consume. And that news is skewed toward your preferences. And this increases bias and the propensity to start rumors that increase stress. And so, for example, in a study conducted, conducted with about 4,000 college students under a campus lockdown due to an active shooter, researchers found that regular substantive updates were vital during a crisis. They also stressed the importance of monitoring social media used during a crisis to mitigate exposure to rumors and subsequent distress. So watch what you're doing with social media. Stay away from the stuff that's going to stress you out, in other words. And we're at the end of our first segment, believe it or not, and I'm not through, I'm only through four of these. So we're going to pick this up after the break. 
So, folks, sit there, stay tuned. We'll be right back in a couple of minutes. All right, gang, welcome back. Thanks for sitting on through the break. This is Scotty Roberts. You're listening to the Intrepid Radio Program right here on the Odyssey Radio Network. That's O-D-Y-S-Y-1.com to go find out everything there is to know about Odyssey Radio and this show and all the outlets where it plays. You can also come on over to my YouTube channel to listen to the video simulcast, watch it, and join the live chat room there of all the Intrepid heads. Share your ideas, see what everybody has to say. Make some good friends over there as well. That's at youtube.com slash Mr. Scotty Roberts. Let's jump back into these. This is the uh, 10 things that the mentally strong do during a pandemic, during a crisis. Now, I slipped into it and said, I believe I'm a mentally strong person. Um, This thing isn't undoing me. I'm not stressed out. Um, I have the same stressors that I had with my business and my income that I had before the pandemic started. I'm a freelance artist. I still have some projects coming in, which is great, but it's not much different than it's always been. I'm busy. My kids are home, and that's about the only difference. Kids are home all day instead of being gone six hours out of the day at school. My wife works at home. She's a stay-at-home mom. Uh, She was doing massage. That's changed for her because she can't go out and do massage like she was doing before. So um, all this to say is that there are things that when you look to what makes somebody mentally strong, you adapt to that. You take that on. You don't let the externals push you down. We're on number five. What do the mentally strong do to get through a pandemic or a crisis? They display self-compassion for lack of productivity. (laughs) I got lots of that. I'm still busy, but I could be more busy. So there might be self or societal pressure to be productive with the increased time that you have at home. Do you feel that way? Do you feel like you're not getting anything done? Do you feel like you're not exercising so you're putting on some pounds? I've actually lost six pounds since the beginning of all of this. How about that? Now, for somebody my size, I'm in the 275 category. For weight, six pounds is hardly noticeable. I feel the difference, though. Uh, I'm not stressed out. I'm not binge eating. Yesterday, I forgot to eat two-thirds of the day, and I had some ramen noodles uh, for dinner, and uh, I think a bagel or something like that. And so that's not the healthiest eating, but I was busy enough that I forgot to eat yesterday. So I'm not putting on weight in that respect. But I never have to ask myself what what I can do. My time is... I got up this morning at 4.30 a.m. I woke up. 
And I got up and I made some coffee and I went out and I uh, had coffee and a smoke out on the patio. And I read through my, my incoming messages. The sun started to rise. Um, I went in. I cleaned the kitchen from yesterday. I ran the dishwasher. I scrubbed all the pots and pans. It was amazing how in one day a family of five can use almost every dish and pot and pan in the cupboard because I did the same thing yesterday morning. Clean the kitchen in phases, and then I'd step outside, watch the rising sun. It was warm outside. It was nice. Uh, so I got things done this morning. And is it reasonable to be productive when we're at war? A question might be asked. Is it Important to understand that lack of focus, concentration, and overwhelming feelings are common during times of war, crisis, pandemic. Abraham Maslow, Ph.D., used his seminal framework, Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, to describe stages that we have to pass through in order to achieve the high levels of self-actualization and creativity. The idea is that we're not able to reach the higher levels of the pyramid without a strong foundation at the bottom. And during a pandemic or a crisis like this, most of us are temporarily housed in the first two levels of the pyramid, psychological or physiological and safety. Mentally strong people realize that when their physiological and safety needs feel threatened, such as during a pandemic, they don't put pressure on themselves to produce or try to overachieve. They realize what's going on. They set back a little bit. I've got a strange calmness about me through all of this. Some people might say, it's because I'm an idiot. Others might say, well, you're mentally strong. You've got a good foundation. You want to make sure that foundation is... So I'm not quite as productive as I should be. But I'm still busy. I still got a ton of things to do. So number six, the mentally strong focus on facts. Mentally strong individuals are acutely aware of when their emotions are getting the best of them. You know what? I know it when I get stressed out. I've had my days and uh, I know when it's coming on. I can see it by the way I talk to my wife or the way I talk to my kids or that every little thing is bothering me. Who left that wadded up piece of paper towel on the living room floor? Damn it, come and pick it up, you piggly kids. What, do we live in a slum? Are we a garbage dump? You know, whatever. You get the idea. So sometimes that happens to me, but I become aware of it very quickly. So according to Marsha Linehan, Ph.D., creator of Dialectical Behavior Therapy, that's DBT, we all have three states of mind. An emotional mind, a rational mind, and a wise mind. Our emotional mind is where emotional statements rule. Emotional st What's an emotional statement? Oh my God, we're all going to die. It's an emotional statement. A rational statement. This is all going to come to an end, and we're going to work our way through this. Things will get back to some level of normalcy. And a wise mind, the mind that says we can bear through this, there are lessons to learn, we can learn things about ourselves, our family can get closer, and when we get back to normal, we'll be even stronger than we were. So our emotional mind is where emotional statements rule. Look at yourself now and ask, where am I in the mix in all this? Uh, emotional statements, do you blurt out a lot of emotional statements? Are you governed by your emotions in this? And I'm not talking about being Spock and eschewing emotion, but I'm saying look at yourself and ask, are, are you giving emotional response to all of this? Uh, the rational mind um, is uh, uh, where facts and logic prevail. And our wise mind is a blend between the two. Being emotional is natural during times of crisis, but consciously moving to a rational mind by listing facts and logic, can decrease unnecessary negative states. For example, if someone is catastrophizing, uh, I'm going to catch the COVID-19 and I'm going to die. A rational mind approach would list the statistics 
and the evidence of the low percentage of individuals who die from it. Other rational statements might include, I have a low likelihood of contracting the disease because I'm following the stay-at-home orders, wearing a mask, etc., etc., etc. Now, the wise mind combines those. That says, I could possibly catch this if I'm not careful and abide by the rational, logical rules. So, there you go. Number seven, what do the mentally strong do? They meditate. The benefits of meditation include anxiety reduction, reduced stress. Now, meditating isn't having a quiet time in front of the TV. No, it's getting alone with your thoughts. It's meant to reduce anxiety and to renew yourself. It reduces stress. Um, increased attention span is what comes of this. Uh, reduced anxiety, uh, decreased depression, improved emotional health and well-being. Studies have found that long-term meditators are able to return to baseline quicker. That's that state of calm versus non-meditators after exposure to stress stressful stimuli. If you take time, and when we do tarot readings, I've pulled the hermit card a few times. And the her for people recently, and the hermit car basically says you need to take a little time to extricate yourself from all the things going on around you, find a private spot, a private place, and go inward, shed the light inside, um, dig into yourself, examine yourself, and at the same time clear your mind of the negative stuff. And you're going to find that this reduces your stress and your anxiety. And there are modes and methods to do this. I'm not going to give a class right here and now on how to meditate. There are people you can talk to. Uh, you can talk to people that are right here in this chat room tonight or that are, are frequent members of this show. Uh, Jennifer Roberts over in uh, Great Britain is one that you could talk to. Uh, you could also just look something up on YouTube. They have great videos on how to meditate and uh, so this is a good thing to get into and by the way if you're hearing that that's my wife's phone alarm going off over on her desk way over there and it stopped thank goodness it was a nice twinkly little you know fairy jingling going on thank goodness it's done all right so meditate take time for yourself if it's 10 to 15 minutes a day Find that time and do it. Break away and meditate. If you got to close the door and lock it, say, I'm going to, Dad or Mom, or I'm going to be gone for 15 minutes. So nobody bother me. And those of you who have mates or spouses that uh, need to do this, support them in that. And you support your own partner. All right, moving on from meditation. Number eight. Eight. Mentally strong people avoid toxic people. Mentally strong people understand toxic people and behaviors, and they limit their time with them. Behaviors such as gossip, chronic lying, being demanding, being self-centered on their own needs versus yours are quite negative, and they take a toll on your well-being. And while you might be able to tolerate some toxicity with friends, family, colleagues during non-pandemic times, eliminating toxic energy is vital when you're in survival mode during a pandemic where you are under restrictions. And if it's toxic family members, think about limited ex limiting exposure or using email or text to communicate as mentally strong people choose leaders to follow. It is also just as important to choose to spend time with loved ones who display healthy behaviors and add to your well-being, not detract from it. So these are uh, separating yourself from toxicity. What if, what if your partner is toxic? How do you separate yourself from that? I know something we try to do around here 
on this is if you're feeling anxious and you're feeling pent up and you're feeling like you're going to blow up or burst, say something. Take it away. Like we take it away from the kids. The kids see enough of it. And they see when the, when the seams are splitting a little bit around here. But what you do is you work very hard to be non-toxic. And you can do that by some of these previous steps. Number one, meditate. If you feel that you're toxic or your, your partner is telling you, hey, you're being kind of, you're being nasty. You're being cantankerous. You're being crotchety. You're being pissy. Um, don't take that in the wrong way. Take that as that's the way you're being perceived. And you might be passing that toxicity on to the other person. Did you notice that? If somebody is pessimistic, somebody is pissy, somebody is uh, toxic, that they can tend to spread that on to the people closest to them. So find ways to work through that. Find ways in yourself to work through that. One of those ways is that meditation. Find a way to dig in deep to yourself and really extricate yourself from it. So strong mental people, mentally strong, keep doing that. Uh, they focus on self-care. You know, look, um, I can't go and see my the guy who cuts my hair, my barber. I haven't seen him in six weeks. My hair's shaggy. But uh, I find ways because I appear on camera every day to make it look decent. Uh, because there's self-care. I trim my facial hair. I use a little mustache wax. Um, I shower. I make myself look presentable. Uh, I dress in mostly clean clothes. Uh, sometimes I, I realize I can go on day three and I'm wearing the same shirt because I haven't gone anywhere. And so uh, self-care. Mentally strong people consistently use self-care. They attempt to be flexible with new routines. And self-care, by the way, isn't just physical, the stuff you see in the mirror. Uh, many gyms are closed, so you might choose other exercise options while remaining socially distanced, such as running, walking, biking. Um, they prioritize things that are going to help them through the pandemic, such as raising their own vibration with laughter, connecting with family and friends, coupled with rest and good sleep and hygiene. You know, Rocky and I, when we do the Situation Room, we go off the deep end because that comic relief is not only relief for us, it's relief we hope for you as well. It's not good to be serious all the time. I tend to be a very serious person, so it's good for me. I'm glad I have Rocky. I'm glad we have that show. We are relief to each other. My wife and I can tend to be relief to each other, and I'm talking about in a comic way. Why did my hands go like that when I did that? That's weird. So, um, <clears throat> so there are ways. You know, I've got these people that I talk to, friends of mine, uh, every night on a on a conference video conference call. That's one of those things I do, and we laugh through most of it because we're we're not getting serious. We're breaking the monotony and the toxicity. So, number 10. This is the final one of these. Mentally strong people know their personality needs. Introvert versus extrovert. Mentally strong people know themselves and what they need to feel supported. Those that are introverted focus on the internal states of being and small gatherings versus external sources of stimulation. A lot of socializing. Introverts often feel drained after heavy socializing. They need to recharge in their energy in solitude. Conversely, extroverts gain energy from other people, and they enjoy lots of social activity. I'm one of those people. I like social activity. Introverts realize they may have a need to connect virtually using FaceTime, Zoom, Skype, Google, Hangouts, whatever. But they do so in small groups and less often than extroverts. But both personalities may have different needs to promote well-being. And this is the thing with this whole um, idea of understanding who you are. 
if you know you're introverted or extroverted, you're going to know the things that you need to help you thrive, to help you get to that place where you're mentally strong about things. And so um, I really encourage you to do some of these things. Take, um, take all of this to heart, that you have the ability to be strong and thriving and end up in a growth cycle period after this whole virus thing is passed and the pandemic is passed. Uh, you don't have to live in fear. You can live in these positive things. I'm going to recap them just very quickly for you. Limit your news and media exposure. Uh, accept your feelings as being normal. You're going to feel things. You're going to have your ups and downs. Accept that as normal and move on. Keep moving. Carefully choose the leaders you follow. Limit social media exposure. Now, I spend an awful lot of time on social media, comparatively. But the kind of media exposure, for me, has changed dramatically. Now, I don't like to argue as much. I don't like to debate quite as much right now. That's not what I'm all about. Although, I'm, I'm good. I'm good with a good argument and a good debate right now. But limit your social media exposure. Limit what you take in from social media, all right? Uh, display self-compassion for your own lack of productivity. If you're not getting things done the way you want to, if you're sitting around morning, it's like, eh, so what? The time will come again when you will be so busy that you're not going to know how to get things done anymore. Now you got time. Go with it. Flow with it. Read a book. Oh, my God, read a book. Do you know how healthy it is to read a book? Do you know how mind-expanding that is to read something? So, if you're not feeling productive, so what? Go with it. You don't have to be productive all the time. You're in a timeout, so to speak. So use that time wisely. Focus on facts. Don't surround yourself with all kinds of conspiracy theories and things that are going to make your head spin. Focus on just the facts and leave the rest for later when you got time to deal with that. Meditate. Break yourself away from the, the I'm trying to think of the right word for it, the, the, the stress and the anxiety of daily life. First of all, work very hard to not let things stress you and make you anxious. But one of the ways to do that is meditate. Take time out for yourself. Move away from things. All externals gone. And go inward. Uh, for some of you who are very spiritual or religious, you can use that time to pray. Pray and meditate. Even the Bible said, pray and meditate. Do that. Uh, limit toxic people and your exposure to them. Don't let people talk you down. Conversely, be somebody who talks people up. Be up. Don't be fake up. Be up knowing that you can be up. There's no reason to let toxicity rule the day. Watch your emotions. Watch the emotions of others. Focus on your self-care. Take care of yourself. Not just physically, not just vanity, but in other ways. Mentally, emotionally. So focus on that. And understand your personality needs. You're an introvert or you're an extrovert. Maybe you're a mix of those. I'm an extroverted person. I like to be out and about. But um, because I had some of my health issues, my surgeries and stuff over the last few years, I've become in the last two and a half years more introverted than I've ever been. I didn't feel like going out physically. Not like I used to, anyway. But for me, as that, that comes back. That's coming back, slow but sure. I like to gather with people. I love my friends. Uh, but if you're introverted and you just like to stay away from the crowd, realize the strengths that come with both of those activities. 
and focus on those. And let me put a note in here on this. If you are alone in your isolation, you don't live with a partner, uh, you're not sequestered with somebody else, you don't have kids at home, you're all by yourself. Sometimes, sometimes, that can be very grating on people. What if you're an extrovert and you're sequestered at home? It's going to drive you insane. So find outlets for that. Like, I have this zoo. Rocky and I, we do the radio show. I do this radio. I do two radio shows a day, every day of the week, except Saturday. And Sunday, I only do the one. But that, for me, is a way to reach out to other people, to communicate with other people. Um, and I've mentioned it twice now, the Zoom phone call or the group video chats I have every night. Those are big aids in helping to break out of feeling isolated. But, of course, I don't feel isolated. I got my wife and my kids here all the time. So we're never isolated. Sometimes we want more isolation. So a little bit of isolation would be nice, and it would be helpful. So uh, th those are some things you can focus on. Take those 10 things, take them to heart, and find ways that you do not let this pandemic, this period of social isolation, this period of maybe losing ground financially, of not working, of not having the contact you like. Imagine if what this would be like if we didn't have social media at all, if we didn't have connections, technology that we have. So you've got a whole hell of a lot more than maybe people in medieval times who were experiencing the plague had. Could you imagine what that was like? You didn't come into contact with anyone. So find ways to get healthy, stay healthy, grow your mental strength. It's like building muscle. If you go to the gym and you lift weights, why do you do that? You want to build muscle. You want to be pumped up. You want to pump yourself up emotionally, mentally, psychologically, if you will. So there you go, folks. Take those things. Take them to heart. We didn't get it all into the delusions so much of social media and the Internet and conspiracy theories and all that. We'll get back to that tomorrow. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful for you. Thank you for being here. Those of you in the chat room, thanks for being here. I love you all. I appreciate you all. And we'll talk again tomorrow. 23-hour break. And we'll be right back. Stay tuned. <laughs>